Okay, the photoelectric effect, we'll briefly go through it. This is what Einstein realised when he looked at light. Now what he found was this. If we take a metal and we shine light of different frequencies on the metal, what he found was that when light of certain frequencies is shone on the metal, it doesn't matter how long you leave the light shining on the metal, you get no electrons ejected from the surface of the metal. However, when the frequency of the light overcomes what's called the threshold frequency, we get instantaneous ejection of electrons. There is no time delay. As soon as the frequency of the photons or the frequency of the light is sufficient that the energy of them is greater than what we call the work function of the metal, we get spontaneous emission of electrons. Now the electrons reside inside the metal. Now the electrons, because of energy, because of the temperature of the metal, they have a distribution of kinetic energies already. Now, those are the, when we have light coming in, he showed that the energy of our photon equals HF, Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. Now, if we've got light shining on a metal surface, and our electron has what's called a work function, the symbol is phi. If the work function, the ionization energy, if you like, of our electron equals 3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, then we can calculate the threshold frequency, the light, which would have sufficient energy per photon to remove these electrons from inside the metal. So in this case, <coughs> if I wanted to calculate the frequency of light, I could say, well, E equals HF, and that is equal to 3 times 10 to the minus 19. So the frequency of light necessary to overcome the work function would be 3 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by Planck's constant. And if we put that into our calculator, we can see that that is 3 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 gives us a frequency of light 4.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now that shows us that frequency of light means that each photon that comes in has this much energy, the energy required to overcome the work function. Now then, if the frequency of the light is higher than this point, then the electrons which are ejected will take any additional energy as kinetic energy. Now then, because of this, we say the kinetic energy is HF minus the work function phi. So, if the electron leaves, we say the kinetic energy of the electron is the electron that the photon had take away the energy required in overcoming the work function. So from that we say the kinetic energy of our electron equals HF minus phi. The kinetic energy remaining equals the energy of the photon. Take away the work function. Using this we can calculate the um, kinetic energy or even the velocity of an ejected electron. Even its wavelength using the Broglie's equation. So for example if we had an electron and the work function equals 2.8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules and if light shone on our metal and if the light shining on our metal had a frequency of let's look at our last one 6 times 10 to the 14. So we'll say the frequency is 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. We can calculate when the electron overcomes the work function, we can calculate how much energy will be remaining. Obviously, if the frequency of the light 
meant that the photons did not have enough energy to overcome the work function. We would get no light at all, sorry, no electrons at all ejected from the surface of our metal. So in this case, we can say Ek equals Hf minus phi. So we simply put our numbers in and say the kinetic energy of our electron equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times the frequency of our light, which was 6 times 10 to the 14, minus the work function. And that gives us a kinetic energy of 1.18 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And if we wanted to, we could then say, if we wanted to work out how fast the electrons go, and we could say, well, that then equals a half mv squared. We know the mass of the electron, so we could work out its velocity. And if we wanted to know its wavelength, we could then say, well, we know its velocity, we know its mass, so we could say lambda is h over mv. So we could work out the wavelength of this electron using the de Broglie equation, because we know how much energy it's got, and hence we know its velocity. Now then, key principles in the photoelectric effect are that it illustrates that light travels as discrete packets called photons because as soon as the light comes on we get instantaneous emission. If the frequency of the light is lower than what's called the threshold frequency, the frequency which gives an energy equivalent to the work function, if it's lower than that we get no electrons. We could leave it on all day and we'd never get any emission of electrons. That illustrates that this travels as packets, not as waves. If it travelled as a wave, after a certain time delay, once the energy had built up here, we would get emission of electrons. However, that never happens, which illustrates that this must be travelled as packets. And any remaining energy is taken off as kinetic energy in the electron. You may be asked about the intensity of the light. If the intensity of the light is increased, then what we would get is more electrons because intensity means more photons. So the more photons we've co got coming in, the more electrons we've got going to get given off. So a greater intensity will result in more electrons. However, increasing the frequency will not result in more electrons. Each photon, if you increase the frequency, each photon has more energy. This does not mean we get more electrons. All this means is, if they've got more energy, it means that the electrons leave with more energy. We don't get more of them. Okay? Now that's the basics of the photoelectric effect. We could also look at the next stage, where we look graphically at how we can plot this and work out Planck's constant using the gradient of a graph.